Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's episode will be an update and follow up on where I got to with the animated scene I started in the previous episodes. First though, I'd like to announce that I just did some updates to my Patreon page. I'm gonna share some more in-depth videos over there, elaborating on my process a bit. I just put one up diving into the details of how I use projection mapping, a technique that I've shared in some of my other videos here on YouTube. So if that's something you find interesting, then feel free to head over there. You can find a link in the description below. But I'll also keep posting videos here on YouTube, of course. What you see here is me drawing some in-between frames to smooth out the movement of this animation. I showed you how I set up my scene in the last video, and we had all the main keyframes drawn out. So the establishing part of the process is sort of over, and now it's all about getting the frames blended together in a nice way. I'm leaving the mouth movements to last, as that will have to be exactly timed to the right frames. So having the overall body movement done first, I can make sure that the acting sits well, you know, with the voice track and then finally tackle the lip syncing. I use onion skin in Photoshop to see where the previous and the upcoming frame is, and it allows me to better decide where my in-between frame should go. I'd like to say though that drawing in-betweens doesn't always mean that I should draw and position the new drawing right between the two keyframes. Most likely they should be between the two onion skin frames, but not necessarily right in the middle. This all depends on how I want my motion to flow. Do I want an absolute linear movement going from point A to B? Should it move at an exponential speed, either going fast in and then slow down or the other way around? Or should it maybe take on an S-curve animation where it starts slow, then moves quicker and then slows down again? These are questions I ask myself when putting the in-betweens in. When we look at animating a character, and when we are after a more natural movement, we would most likely go with some sort of easing on both sides of the keyframe. Things generally tend to start off a little bit slow and then take up a bit of speed and then slow down again. If your frames are spaced out in a linear fashion, it can easily feel robotic and not very fluid. It has its use for sure, and it's sometimes what we're after. Uh, what I'm trying to say here though is that being aware of where you put the in-between frames is important, and that defines the flow of your animation. It's both enjoyable and a bit exhausting to clean up an animation like this. When sitting down to animate, it's important not to approach it thinking, all right, I'm now gonna draw the same character 30 more times in a slightly different pose, but rather just let the thing take its time and focus on one step at a time. Think of it this way, like animating a character is actually a brilliant practice of drawing. It's not often we draw the same thing over and over in this way. After the 10th time of drawing him, I felt a bit more confident in how to draw his face and it sort, I sort of got to know him. I guess it's like a comic book artist that draws the same characters for their story. You know, in the end, they always look a bit more developed than in the first few pages. To get the mouth movement looking okay, I've kept a small mirror on my desk uh, that I can look over to and act out the facial expressions to get some references. There are things like certain vowels that will be expressed more than a lot of consonants, for example, so I try to focus on them first. Okay, let me show you where we've gotten to so far, and then we can kick off the next stage in the process, which will be coloring. I've drawn a few keyframes for my other characters in the shot before, uh, so that bit has a bit more context now. And when we play it back, it all looks like this. You could maybe lock off on this one to get to that next crib. Yeah, but then you might have to really go dynamically to the one after. I guess this is the crux. 
that sloping edge at the top there. It's like nothing. To get a full picture of what this scene is all about, I suggest you take a look at my two previous videos about the same scene. I'm really happy about how the movement turned out for this guy here, and I think the lip syncing actually worked pretty well. It's something I haven't done a lot of, so it's fun to explore something new and learn, you know, how to do it. Okay, but let's get on with this. It's time to start coloring this guy. In this film, my characters have a sort of lineless style to them. At least they have no solid outline, so much of what I have done now is actually not to be seen. It will be what drives the color layer. So buckle up, because we're in for another ride of redrawing this all again, uh, but with color shapes. I think first getting a pretty clean drawn outline for the animation is really helpful though, as it really shows what the movement will look like. The whole animation is solved now, I just need to render it. I will start to just get one frame done here, but when doing this for each of the frames I would not keep changing colors and finish each frame one at a time. I would rather focus on just his skin color for example and then go over all the frames uh, with that and then you know move on to another part of his body. You know like efficiency and productivity is key here to not go insane in the process. I have a set of colors for this guy that I've plotted out on the canvas here to color pick from. I've created a new set of layers for the colors and dropped the opacity of my outline animation. The outline still sits on top but it's faint enough so I can see where my new strokes go. I start by actually creating a line that will contain the specific color and then filling that inner area. I've created a Photoshop action that speeds up the filling process. By selecting the area I want to fill uh, with the quick selection tool, I can just hit a short command and what it does is to expand the selection by a few pixels and then filling it in with the selected color. If I use the paint bucket tool, you know, the default one, uh, it gives this ugly edge, so this expanding method is great. Now let's just finish this first image. As I said, after the first image has all the colors and we can see what the final thing will look like, I individually focus on each section. As you can see, I do add lines, but I only show the lines where there are overlap in the same colors. So to define his fingers, for example, how his jacket folds and how his jawline is and so on. This entire process is very slow and time consuming as always, but I do what I can to speed up the process. When designing your character for animation, you wanna think about what details you are willing to animate. By deciding that this guy, for example, has a birthmark on his face and two strands of hair coming out from his fringe, it all adds to the workload. So you had to weigh the design decisions and check with yourself if you have the energy to animate it. I thought those two decisions there were character building, so I wanted them in, but I think you get my point. Here he is in color, fully animated, 
chatting away. My next step will be to paint the background. He will need some shading, but I will not do that until I've decided what the background and environment he sits in looks like. I will leave it here for this episode. Massive thanks to all you guys for the nice comments, and also big thanks to those who support me on Patreon. I'm excited to build more of a community over there. But also, I'm really excited to make more progress on the film and share it here with you guys on YouTube. Stay tuned for some more videos, comment below how you deal with tackling your animation projects, and also subscribe to make me happy. <laughs> I'll see you all soon. Bye.